Order. Welcome to the House of Commons. This, is, uh, this, is, this, this session is actually called the Tajen debate. So Tajen is the Balinese word for a cockfight. It's, uh, um, it's a traditional game uh, that involves two cocks fighting uh, for ceremonial purposes here in Indonesia. But we thought that that wasn't really barbaric enough for the type of debate that we want. So we went for the House of Commons approach to debate. It's been in the news recently. And uh, we thought this was an appropriate kind of uh, space to bring out some of the controversial topics that we maybe should be addressing in this conference. And so uh, I am John Burko, uh, your speaker of the house today. I'll be uh, the, the chair, the moderator through this. We'll be hearing some very right honorable ladies and gentlemen uh, debating very important topics. But before we get to that, we need, uh, we need to uh, establish a few ground rules. First of all, you're, all not, you're not an audience. You're here representing your constituents. You are members of parliament, and so we expect you to act accordingly, representing your constituents, ready to speak up in defense of your beliefs and those of your constituents, and so you have to be participants in this. You're not an audience, okay? So, we want to hear, you have to, you have to talk and hear and shout. So this is really about uh, uh, the sound of democracy as much as the process. Uh, right honorable gentleman in the back, I didn't catch your name, but I would ask you to please respect the speaker when he's uh, uh, is talking. <laughs> now, um, I put the... Uh, uh, to, to just get a, 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 an idea of how we would like to run this debate, I ask uh, the right honorable gentleman, uh, Bruce Campbell, uh, representative for the constituency of climate change, agriculture, and food security in the world, uh, to uh, please address this question. Do you believe that this honorable speaker, myself, of course, is the most articulate and visionary facilitator of debates around controversial topics on climate smart agriculture, in addition to being a highly talented scientist and established YouTuber. Order. I must order the honorable gentleman to withdraw immediately from the house for the remainder of this day's sitting. This is intolerable behavior. I, I find that an appalling statement from my honorable uh, speaker there, uh, my honorable uh, gentleman, but uh, so, so, so I'm going to recourse to a, uh, um, a friend of mine, who I'm sure will, will support me, uh, uh, Right Honorable Gentleman Ngoni Chiranda, do you believe that the Right Honorable Gentleman Bruce Campbell, who is fully entitled to his opinion, is correct in that shocking declaration? Ah. <laughs> you are well-intentioned and principled, but you are over-excitable and you need to contain yourself. It requires you to take some medicament and so be. After the imposition... <laughs> okay, so... You're getting an idea of how this is meant to work. Now we're going to go to a little bit more full audience participation. And so this is where you need to pr uh, 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 practice your eyes and your nays, okay? So I put to the floor, and so you are all going to uh, please ex express your opinion on this one, uh, that we appreciate the organizing committee uh, in all of our vested powers uh, for an amazing event this week. Uh, what, what does the floor think of that? Aye. That was rather poor, rather poor. Uh, I was expecting more of such, a, such an amazing, esteemed group of people. Uh, how about this one, then? Uh, the, does the House believe that we should cancel lunch and work through our important tasks in climate-smart agriculture today? Aye. We're getting better. We are getting better. Thank you very much. That's, that's, that's how we want this to, to, to be run. OK, so. Um, but to be honest, it wasn't quite. Uh, 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 I, I, I felt there was a little bit of doubt around that, around that nay. And so the other thing we're going to be doing during this session is putting to a vote. And so um, when we put to a vote, we'll hear, uh, I'll, I'll put forward a motion, and then you have to either agree with an aye or disagree with a nay. And so 
are put to the vote. Does the House believe that we should cancel lunch and work through our important tasks in climate smart agriculture? All those in favor? We've got a few, excellent, very, very good. Okay, we'll cancel those gentlemen's lunch. We'll have a small session here. Those of you uh, against that motion? Excellent, excellent. So we've got the voting now down. This is fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to invite our illustrious panel of right honorable gentlemen and ladies uh, to uh, come to the, to the stage. We have uh, Kofi Boateng. Uh, can you please stand up and, and take, take your seat? We have uh, Shilp Verma. Right Honourable Gentleman Shilp Verma. The Right Honourable Lady uh, Caroline Monguera. My, 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 my Right Honourable Lady Caroline Monguera and the, the Right Honourable Lady Nitya Chanana. Please take the stage. Wonderful. So. You'll see on the screen today's agenda. I put to the House the agenda for, for today. Uh, we'll be uh, presenting the bills just now. We'll have an, uh, this is, we've just done that. Um, there's a motion with debate on the best adaptation strategy. Uh, when the House is, uh, the Speaker is uh, talking, one must seat, be seated. Uh, these are the House rules, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> Um, so mo I put motion with debate first uh, on the agenda is that the best adaptation strategy right now is mitigation. And so we'll have two uh, uh, right honorable speakers arguing for and against that, and then some comments from the floor. And then uh, we'll go to motion with debate for climate smart agricultural practices are only reaching the top 25% of farmers. So those are our two topics for today. What we'll do is beforehand, and afterwards, we'll have a vote just to see what the, the feeling in the room is. And so uh, I'd like to uh, invite up to the podium uh, in favor of the first motion, the best adaptation strategy right now is mitigation. We have Kofi Boateng, please take to the, to the stage here. And we have Shilp Verma against the motion uh, on, uh, on, on this side here. And so, we start with a vote, and so I'd like to hear the eyes, those, those in favor, the eyes of this motion, that the best adaptation strategy right now is mitigation. Please uh, place your vote. Okay. And those against the vote, the nays. Okay, so, so we have some space for, for, for debate. Now, each will have three minutes to make an opening statement. And then uh, we will pass the floor for the honorable ladies and gentlemen to make your comments. Uh, and then they will have one minute for closing. And so we uh, are going to break uh, regular House of Parliament rules. And we'll be going to uh, the arguments in favor first. So I hand to the right honorable gentleman, Kofi uh, Boateng, for the uh, first uh, in favor of this motion. Thank you very much. Thank you, right honorable speaker. I am Kofi Boat and I represent the constituency of Um I'm speaking for the motion Sorry. that the best adaptation option now is mitigation. Well, to some, this argument is synonymous with the chicken and egg situation, but I beg to differ. The situation of a changing climate and ways to combat its effects is one of life and death. I'll proceed by attempting to define what mitigation and adaptation means, though I feel very unqualified looking at the caliber of people here. So mitigation would mean that the actions that are geared towards reducing emission concentration levels in the atmosphere, more like prevention. Adaptation will mean changing the way we do things to be able to cope with current climate change impacts. Well, to every choice, there's a consequence. We have two choices regarding climate change and how we handle this impact. One, do we reduce pumping greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere through mitigation strategies? Or two, do we tag along and hope that whatever the consequences are, we can adapt and survive? In terms of cost, which is the bottom line, 
Mitigation in the short term requires huge investments, and experts put this cost at between 1% to 3% of aggregated worldwide GDP per annum. What is the cost of adaptation? It costs between 70 to 100 billion USD a year, and it's estimated that this will increase by fivefold by 2050. This means that if we even choose adaptation as the best option, we are not going to be able to meet our targets. Why? Because currently, we are able to fund only one third of the strategies that we roll out. Well, I concede that the initial investment for mitigating is high. But can we cost, can we put cost to the rising sea levels, loss of ecosystems, and damage caused by extreme weather events? I would say no. Tough times require tough decisions. And this is the next human frontier. We reduce concentration levels through mitigation strategies, or the effects of climate change would overwhelm us because we have not been able to see the desired effect through adaptation. We have control over reduction. We can transform the system because we are responsible for 90% of greenhouse gas emissions. The cost of losing our survival is far greater. It will be a shame if we lose. Before I said, I just want to ask my very dear friend here that why do you fix when you can prevent? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, uh, if we left. were having this <laughs> argument 30 years ago or even 20 years ago, I would probably agree with my brother here. But the problem is, and I agree, he's absolutely right. Prevention is better than cure. But that doesn't apply when the disease has already taken roots, right? So now we are, we are in a situation where uh, climate change is already going to have an impact. We are not in a position to take any steps which will ensure that climate change has no impact. So once we are there, then and especially when we're talking about climate smart agriculture, when we're talking about the impacts of climate change on agriculture, maybe if we're talking about the effect of climate change on businesses, then there is still mitigation might be the best strategy. But when we're talking about poor farmers, uh, who are mostly the victims of climate change and not the propagators, uh, then we have to talk about and we have to give precedence to adaptation. Because they are not the ones who are causing climate change, but they are the ones who are having the most effect of uh, climate change. And therefore, we must prioritize adaptation. Mitigation, I'm not saying that we should not invest in mitigation. Mitigation definitely is required, and especially for the future. But it's, it's kind of like a hope, right? We can hope that we'll be able to mitigate, we'll be able to go back to pre-1990s emission levels, maybe even better. But adaptation is what is required now. Um, I want all of us to, to engage in a thought experiment, right? This is the fifth CSA conference in 2019. Suppose the 15th, C and I, I think this is a biennial event, so if the 15th CSA conference, we are having this de debate here again, um, what if my friend here was wrong, and what if I was wrong? Um, if we keep investing in mitigation and don't achieve the goals that we have set ourselves, and they are very ambitious goals, and they are going to be very difficult to achieve, but if we don't achieve them, then we'll have huge impacts of climate change and very little adaptation capacity. But on the other hand, if I'm wrong, even then 20 years down the line, we would have good adaptation capacity, we would have done some, uh, we, would, we would have made some progress on mitigation, but still having that capacity to adapt to climate change is not going to hurt anyone even in the future. So what I'm going to end with is that there's this saying, we hope for the best, what, but we must prepare for the worst. Uh, we have to assume that uh, climate change is going to happen. We're already talking about, uh, we're seeing reports where 1.5 degrees change is almost uh, uh, inevitable, even 2 or 2.5, that seems like the more realistic one. So we have to learn how to adapt to that change, uh, and only then will we be able to serve uh, the most vulnerable, which are the smallholder farmers. Thank you. So I thank the right honourable gentleman for, for, your, for your arguments there. Uh, now we put it to the floor. Uh, would uh, any constituents, any members of parliament uh, uh, like to comment on uh, those arguments? 
Uh, if you would like to comment, you stand up, and I'll call the order. And so, okay, the, the, the loud gentleman in the back there. And then we'll go to the, to, to the gentleman here who's not so loud and a little bit better behaved. Shame. Shame, Mr. Speaker. This is Philip Thornton. Take, uh, I'm, the, I'm the member for Edinburgh South. It's working. And I, I put it to the two gentlemen. If all, if all greenhouse gas emissions stop tomorrow, there are so many lags in the system. We're still looking at 1.4 degrees, probably. We can't stop adapting. We have to do both. We can't just do mitigation without adaptation. The right honourable gentleman. I, I, I don't agree with uh, Phil what he said uh, because the recent uh, the few articles which shown that in 2100 there will be 70 percent of climates will be still existing somewhere else like which we have. So that means we have the climates we experienced earlier somewhere and we have the adaptive. Uh, we are doing agriculture there, so we, we can adapt to those climates. So uh, I think the point uh, we emphasize is adaptation is the key, and we, I do agree with the shield. Yeah. Right, honorable gentleman has a good point. Well made. Uh, further comments from the floor? You stand up, please. Please, uh, can you abide by parliamentary rules? <laughs> uh, we'll go with the right honorable lady there, and then the gentleman in the, in the aqua blue, I believe, uh, yeah, shirt. Yeah. And then we go down to here, and then we have uh, Danush, yes. Uh, uh, please, go ahead, uh, uh, Right Honorable uh, Lady Linny Wallenberg. Linny Wallenberg from CCAFS, you're missing the point. The point is not mitigation or adaptation. The point is that we still need to adapt, but the best form of adaptation is to mitigate. Yeah. If we don't examine mitigation, we're just going to exacerbate the problem. So I don't understand why everybody's polarizing the argument and making this just about adaptation or mitigation, we need to do both. <laughs> Thank you very much, very good. Uh, uh, right honorable gentleman in the aquamarine top. Can we get these microphones quick to, to the people? We're gonna... Uh, I partially agree with Linny. I think we can do both, but I, I do think there are times where you have to choose between the two, and for me, I'm choosing adaptation. Um, I forgot the, num the exact number from the big facts yesterday, but the food system is, what, only one-third of the mitigation picture? So even if we were able to totally transform the agricultural system and reduce agricultural emissions to zero, there's still going to be enormous, enormous warming that's happening, and agriculture is in, in big trouble when, if, we, if uh, energy and transportation systems are not also changed. So, uh, yeah, I think we need to put farmers first, and that's what adaptation does. Thanks. <coughs> okay. The gentleman down here, and then we have... Yeah, this is uh, YG. Uh, yesterday and day before yesterday, we heard that uh, agriculture contributes about 11% to the mitigation, I mean, greenhouse gas emissions. It means that 90% is out of the domain of agriculture, apart from land use. So I think we need to set our priorities that adaptation uh, should be the priority area for us right now to face the climate variability that we are experiencing, which is emanating from climate change. But mitigation has to be a core benefit for adaptation. That is my view. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I? Can I uh, uh, excuse me, but we must abide by parliamentary rules. Uh, the right gentleman here was standing up first. Um, honorable Speaker, members of the floor, and Mr. Speaker, I disagree with both honorable gentlemen what they've said because this discussion about, is about climate smart agriculture. And my understanding is that climate smart agriculture, the beauty of the concept is it integrates both adaptation and mitigation depending on the context. So I'm going to abstain from the vote because I disagree <laughs> with both perspectives because it's not about adaptation or mitigation, it's about both of them. Thank you very much. A final comment from the floor down here. Good morning, this is Bhaskar, uh, representing ICAR from India. Uh, if you talk about mitigation, right now we have to conclude our say, conference here and go outside and connect if you adapt mitigation. So, so agriculture is contributing very least to the, the climate change uh, and the GHG emissions. Right now, adaptation is the best strategy for countries, high populous countries like India and China and other things. We cannot 
Uh, right? Otherwise, we have to give up our food ourselves in the lunch, as you said in the beginning. OK, I thank, I thank the floor for comments. We now move towards closing remarks from, the, from our uh, right honorable gentleman. So we will move to Kofi uh, first for one minute of closing remarks. Thank you, honorable speaker. Well, uh, I'll just say a few words. We had one honorable member from the audience saying that we have to put farmers first and adaptation would be the best way of putting farmers first, but I respectfully disagree. Why do you cause the farmer to suffer through your own, uh, what do you call it, ways? When we stop pumping greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere, the farmer will not suffer. Let us do that first, let us mitigate. Why are we running about the question of preventing the emission of greenhouse gases. Why? Why? Is the cost so much that we cannot bear? Have we quantified the cost very well to make the point that, well, let it happen. We can tag along. It is definitely the mitigation way. And I think that is where the focus should be. Thank you. Thank you very much for that impassioned plea. Right, honorable gentlemen. Thank you. Well, of course, we want to do both. And I also want to have a private jet and also have a low carbon footprint. But we can't. And like it was mentioned, often we have to make those choices. The, so the question is not whether we do only one. The question is which one do we need to prioritize if we are faced with that choice. And that's where I think the choice is very clear. And I'm sure that the majority of the House also agrees that we have to prioritize adaptation. We have to come up with solutions where adaptation is immediately available and mitigation may be a, a co-benefit. But we can't prioritize uh, solutions where mitigation is the primary goal and there is no adaptation capacity built. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, so we put it to the floor. Uh, for vote, uh, the motion is that uh, uh, mitigation is right now the best uh, form of adaptation. Uh, those in favor say aye. Those against, nay. nay. Interesting. I think there was a bit of a, a change there. I think there was, uh, there was a movement there. Interesting. Very. OK, so uh, the uh, motion is not passed, but I think it's for debate, ongoing debate. There are very, very good points made by both sides. Thank you, uh, right honorable gentlemen, for those arguments. We're going to move on in the agenda now to the second uh, point. Uh, you, you're welcome to stay here or uh, form part of the house and make comments from the floor. Uh, so uh, let's, let's uh, round of applause. Eyes for those who believe they did excellent jobs. <laughs> the eyes are not very good. You're very good at the nays, but not very good at the eyes. Okay, on to the second debate. Uh, I invite our Right Honourable Ladies to the, to the podium. Uh, for the second debate, we'll be uh, um, arguing the motion is that climate-smart agricultural practices are only reaching the top 25% of farmers. So before uh, these Right Honourable Ladies do their uh, opening remarks, we put it to the floor for an initial vote. Those in favour that climate smart agricultural practices are only reaching the top 25% of farmers. Say aye, please. Aye. And those against the motion, please. Nays. Oh, okay, you're getting better at the eyes there. Okay, so uh, the eyes have it going into the debate. Uh, you have it, uh, uh, the debate to lose now, Caroline, uh, with your argumentation. You have three minutes. Right Honourable Lady Caroline Monguera from the constituency of the International Centre for Tropical Agriculture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm here to represent the constituency of farmers. So I am a member of representative of the farmers. And I'm here to say that we are only seeing climate smart agriculture with only 25% of my fellow farmers. Why do I think so? So you scientists the Member of Parliament has said that you have come here with your representatives, the scientists, to bring this business unusual 
technologies that you call climate smart agriculture. But what did you choose to do? You brought your business and usual technologies, you call them climate smart, in an, a business as usual environment. So what do I mean by that? If you look at the investments that we need as farmers, I need to have investments to be able to, take my, to buy the inputs that you need. I don't have the technology to be able to uh, implement where I am, look at where I am. How do I get, for example, to apply the manure that you want me to apply? I need to be able to carry it from my house to the farm. You want me to put it on my back, take it to the farm. You don't provide me with an easy to use mode of transport. You don't provide me with something that is going to be also affordable for me to afford. You want me to take a motorbike. You don't provide me with the investment, the credit to be able to get it to the farm. So what I'm saying is, the business as usual, Climate Smart Agriculture is operating in a business, the business as usual Climate Smart Agriculture is op operating in a business as usual investment uh, um, environment. So you don't have the investments that we need to learn. How do I know that uh, Climate Smart Agriculture is different, for example? I see that you are telling me that with Climate Smart Agriculture, I am going to mitigate greenhouse gases. What's mitigation in my local language? Can you tell me in one, one word what you mean by mitigation? What's really adaptation and resilience? How do I understand it? So how do you speak to me as a businessman, as a farmer who is interested in profits, who is interested in feeding my children? How do you understand my pressure points? So what I want to say is, I am not, not happy with this technology you're bringing to me. You chose my neighbor. She is the most educated farmer in this village to bring the technology to me. You taught her how to use it. She has children in high school. She has children in college. I don't have that. I am illiterate. I don't have any education. I would never understand what you're talking about because you come with these fancy words. Last year you brought me a technology. I tried it. It failed. How do I really believe that this technology that you recommend now is different? It's going to last. You scientists keep bringing things that don't work. They don't work because you bring them to my extension officer who doesn't even come to my farm, who wears business suits. Order. <laughs> Order. Time, time is, uh, is up. Uh, permit, me, permit me to say that the right honorable lady may have a career in politics ahead of her. Uh, Although the timekeeping uh, needs to be improved, my lady. Um, uh, against the, the motion, we have uh, the Right Honourable Lady Nitya Chanana from the constituency of the Climate Change, Agriculture and Food Security Programme of India and South Asia. Over to you, Nitya. You have three minutes. Thank you, Your Honour. <laughs> I'm counting on your vote. <laughs> so, I'm going to start... Greta Thunberg style to all those of you who actually believe what she's saying. How dare you? How dare you think that we are just targeting the top 25% of the farmers? I mean, really. I mean, if that's the case, then all of you re need to really introspect and, you know, just go back and relook at your projects. I mean, are we not targeting the most vulnerable group who's most impacted by the climate change uh, changes <laughs> and and even if i mean what's the whole big deal about these 25 percent right they they represent 140 plus million farmers in the world so good job we are at least reaching that numbers right but i think a lot of us are forgetting here that this top-down strategy of you know uh, targeting these top influential rich farmers to reach the actual smallholder farmers is a strategy that most of the successful pilot projects have adopted across the globe. And, uh, but luckily for us, we are not just reaching the top 25, we are going way beyond that. And I have numbers to prove that. Um, so for instance, in India, 
uh, the government's flagship crop insurance scheme. Yes, CSA is not just machines and equipment that require a huge amount of investment. No, there. It, it also includes climate advisory services and crop insurance. So the crop insurance scheme in India has actually managed to benefit millions of farmers, 40% of which were actually smallholder farmers, less than one hectare of land, facing a number of... Uh, uh, resource gaps, but still ma the scheme has managed to reach them. Um, similarly, uh, the Pixar project, for example, the, uh, the climate services uh, project was a huge success across Africa and scale out to over 20 countries. It was, ex it was absolutely inclusive in its very design. Uh, also, a number of pilot projects of Pixar have proven that uh, the beneficiaries of the project uh, uh, were re actually 50% of them were women farmers. So he here we go for inclusiveness as well. So we are not just talking about small, uh, poor farmers. We are also talking about inclusion of the marginal groups as well as women farmers. There are several projects across Southeast Asia as well. The climate services projects, there's the, the poster is right out there if you want to check it out. That has managed to influence adaptation on more than 600,000 hectares of land, all belonging to smallholder farmers. So, yeah, I mean, uh, sure, we're just, uh, we may be reaching the 25%, but we are definitely going way beyond that. We may not have achieved our total 100% yet, um, but we are on our way, and we definitely need to move much faster than we already are doing in order to transform the food systems to adapt to climate change. Thank you. I must say, we, 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 the next motion, if we have enough time, should be that uh, the motion for voters to vote for more uh, uh, women in politics. <laughs> Um, excellent uh, introductions to the, the topic. I now open the debate to the floor. Would any uh, right honorable members of parliament uh, permit uh, me to make comments uh, on uh, the motion under debate? Okay, we have a gentleman uh, at the back waving wildly there with a very nice shirt. We have a gentleman down here for second, uh, the gentleman there for third, and then we have right honorable David Howlett, representative of Great Britain. Uh, on uh, fifth. Uh, we have the, late, uh, the gentleman back there first. No, back. <laughs> it's the shirt, sir. Uh, maybe maybe it, uh, it blends in with the, with the wallpaper. Uh, Speaker of the House, well, I thank you very much. And um, from my small but not insignificant uh, consistu uh, constituency of Laos, I would move to say that, in fact, there seems to be a, a lot of, um, I'd, I'd say, absent-mindedness amongst the speakers of the House. And, uh, in fact, the debate itself is something of a travesty because I seem, you seem to be forgetting that ourselves as farmers, indigenous knowledge started with us. It was inherently climate smart. The practices we used to have were climate smart. Now you're repackaging that bringing it back to us and asking us whether we're, we're receiving those services. I move to prorogue this house. This is a travesty. <laughs> uh, um, uh, do you work with Boris Johnson at all, uh, right honorable gentleman? But uh, impassioned plea there from, uh, from a farmer. Very well, well made uh, point. Over down here to the gentleman at the front here. Thank you. Thank you, honorable speaker. Uh, actually, I, I do believe that uh, the climate smart services are even not reaching to top 25% of the farmers. I do agree, but there is no harm in doing that because uh, so-called elite farmers or uh, the bigger farmers can be the changes in, in the society. So the, uh, the smaller, smaller farmer or the poorer farmer can always be watching uh, the elite farmers and they can learn from them and there is nothing wrong in reaching a uh, few percentage of the farmer. You cannot reach to 100% of the farmer by doing some, uh, some kind of interventions. Okay, thank you very much. The right honorable gentleman down here. Uh, thank you, honorable speaker. Uh, this is Dr. P.S. Brahmanan from Indian Council of Agriculture Research. Uh, I would like to say that uh, whatever the schemes that have been uh, implemented 
in the recent years all have been aimed at uh, you know social responsibility with social responsibility for the small and marginal farmers who constitute more than 80 percent uh, some of the schemes in uh, india and china who have you know huge population and huge acreage they have targeted only small and marginal farmers they have been very successfully being implemented whatever she has quoted uh, for only 25 percent she was talking about the adoption of a general practices not for the climate resilient practices climate resilient practices have been targeted only for benefiting the small and marginal so i don't agree that it is only 25 percent is being coming thank you thank you uh, right honorable gentleman uh, representative of great britain oh we have uh, uh, please wait your turn uh, 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 representative of south asia climate smart agriculture <laughs> Uh, we have at the back there, and then we have the, uh, David Howard. Uh, uh, respected speakers, so I'm Buddhi from Nepal, and a student at the University of Western Australia. So there is uh, no wrong or right, and both speakers are giving very valid reason and very convincing facts. So the thing is only how we are perceiving it and how farmers are perceiving it. So bringing the uh, gaps of our knowledge of scientists and farmers and combining them is the uh, problem that uh, we have uh, to define and we have to uh, teach the farmer. So if we can do that, then I think uh, the number doesn't matter uh, in, in, in such cases because farmers, they are already doing such a numerous and uh, a lot of practices that can be uh, categorized under what we are saying, cl climate is smart, agriculture, or we can give different names. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have the uh, right honorable gentleman, David Howlett. Yeah, thank you, honorable speaker. Um, I come from the global constituency of uh, the Global Resilience Partnership. And I'd like to propose an emergency motion because uh, there's one billion of my constituents are going to bed hungry tonight. There's many millions of children going to bed stunted. And all this house can be based on climate smart agriculture. So Mr. Speaker, please can we have a request for a decent motion tackling the urgency of my constituents who don't want climate smart agriculture, they want food tonight. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. We have final final comment here from uh, Right Honourable Gentleman. Oh, I, I don't see this 25, uh, top 25 percent problem here. If you see uh, globally 570 million smallholder farmers, they only you know, cultivate around 12 percent of land and more than 80 percent of farmers are these top 20, uh, 25 percent uh, uh, farmers, they have more than 80 percent agriculture land and if you, you know, promote agriculture, climate smart agriculture through this top 25, you can just imagine how much area, how much adaptation or mitigation benefit we can get and there are other ways to trickle down this benefit to small farmers and there are other ways to transfer the benefits. Okay, thank you very much. The, uh, we, we must move on. We must move on. And so I ask now our honorable uh, 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 speakers, debaters, to uh, make your final point. You have one minute, uh, starting with uh, my honorable lady here, uh, to close your... Okay. Okay, so um, what I hear from everybody that was supporting the motion is that we need to be cognizant that... Uh, our farmers are already doing things that are really climate smart. So we have practices already in the, with the farming communities that they are already doing. What, what, what we see as the challenges is that the ecosystem under which the farmers are operating is very complex and things are very interlinked. So you are addressing one problem without looking at all the pain points. So one of the members has said that these farmers would like, for example, to improve his nutrition. So how do we look at what are the pain points that we need to address? And then we need an unusual ecosystem. So what that means is that, for example, if you're looking at uh, addressing the issue of productivity, how then do you increase productivity and address the issues of where do you then take that product? Is there a market? Are you able to, for example, uh, minimize wastes and losses? Are you also looking at the investment that is needed? We are only reaching 25% because we keep the same investments. We need unusual investments to be able to reach more than those number of farmers. So, Mr. Speaker, I hope this House is going to pass the motion to increase the investments that we need to make 
the system and the ecosystem work for, to reach more than the 25%. Thank you very much. The Right Honourable Lady makes good points. A tad long-winded for my liking. <laughs> uh, yes, Lady. Um, yes. Um, we, we need uh, more investment from you to go beyond 25%, except I don't agree it's just 25 It's much more than that. But why are we even debating this? Why do we even need a, a, a number to define how, may, how many farmers are we reaching? We have to reach 100% of them. That's a given. Uh, and we have enough proof that there are projects, there are interventions, there are policies all over the world who are helping farmers to uh, to, you know, to break barriers, to, uh, to help them overcome all the challenges that they're facing, to adopt uh, different kinds of technology to adapt to climate change. So uh, a lot of things are already in place, but a lot of things need to be in place, and that is exactly why we are here in the first place. Uh, but um, yeah, I think we're on our way. We need to be faster. We are definitely more than 25%, but we need to reach 100% as soon as possible. Thank you very much. And so we move uh, the motion for vote, final vote. Uh, the motion is climate smart agricultural practices are only reaching the top 25% of farmers. Those in favor say aye. Aye. And those against say nay. Yeah. Uh, does uh, anyone in the floor know what happens when it's a draw? <laughs> is a... Uh, is, uh, the speaker decides. Oh, yeah. Some people are voting on both sides. Ah, there's cheating going on. Uh, you know, this, this, this voting, of, it's the sound of democracy. You know, we could do it with the app, but that, that digital mumbo jumbo does not work in this house. Um, I, I declare it a draw. I, 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 I think we have work to do on both sides, without doubt. I'm very worried about the honorable gentleman's comment from the uh, United Kingdom. Uh, he should be very worried about the price of lettuce in three weeks' time. Uh, and I can understand his concerns. But uh, we move uh, to the final motion of today, which is to prorogue uh, Parliament. And we will hand over to our Prime Minister, uh, Lindiwi, uh, for the next session. I thank the House of Parliament. You've been amazing. Thank you.